What's up guys, Cypher4808 back again for some more One Piece action and we got an early release of chapter 1060, it came out a couple hours early so let's jump right into it. I know I'm pumped so let's see what we got, Luffy's dream. Alright, so the cover page, oh not the cover but the cover of Shonen Jump, we got Gear 5 Luffy, hell yeah he looks sick. One Piece, alright. Then let's see, okay we got a color cover page, we got Jinbei in the back right there, Frankie and it says... We stand for liberty. All right, do we see any Easter eggs in here? We'll have to check it out later. Let's jump right into this chapter. All right, if you guys remember at the end of the last chapter, man, we had a lot of craziness go down. We had Rayleigh show up at um, Amazon Lily, save kind of Kobe and uh, uh, what's her name, Ball Hancock from being uh, taken out by Blackbeard. And then we found out that Shaki is actually a former empress of the Kuja. So, you know, there's just a lot going on. Kobe was kidnapped at the end of the chapter. We got Blackbeard's new bounty reveal. Saw the new pacifistas. I didn't even realize that there were two different pacifistas, one looking like Boa, one looking like Mihawk. So we're going to get more on that. We're going to see Vegapunk. What do you guys think is about to happen in this chapter? Let's see. All right, so chapter 1060, Luffy's Dream. So starting right off. All right, looks like we're in the calm belt or something because we got Big old sea kings coming after the Thousand Sunny right there. And they're like, no way in hell. This is a lie. He'd never kill Vivi's dad. Oh, okay. I guess they're finding out that Sabo is being accused of killing uh, Cobra. So, oh, Luffy looks pissed. He's like, Sabo wouldn't do something like that in a million years. And then now we see, okay, next panel we see uh, Robin. You know, she's got this real pensive look on her face. And then she's, uh, you know, she's in agreement with Luffy right there. And she's like, uh, they're against the world nobles, not, you know, the kings of the, of the different kingdoms. And then it says, Revolutionary Army declares war on celestial dragons. And you see Sabo. And then you see King Cobra of Arabasta uh, assassinated by Revolutionary Chief of Staff Sabo. So we see a picture of uh, uh, Cobra right there. And then we see a picture of Vivi, who is, uh, you know, of course, a princess and is now presumed missing. Or I guess presumed probably kidnapped by Sabo them. And then next panel, you see Zoro's over there, you know, cleaning his sword. And Luffy's just screaming. He's pissed off right now. He's like, turn around. We're going back to Alabasta right now. And he's like, like I've been saying, what good is that going to do? The man's dead. Besides, Vivi was last seen at Mary Joie. All right. So Zoro, you know, kind of trying to be the voice of reason right here. Uh, you know, telling Luffy that there's no, you know, reason for them to go back to Alabasta. Considering Cobra was already killed. So they're not going to find him. And the last place that Vivi was seen was way the hell away from Alabasta out in Mary Joie at um, the Reverie. So what do we got next? Okay, the next panel we're seeing, uh, what's his name? Caribou. So you guys remember at the end of Wano, we saw Caribou, you know, find out that uh, Poseidon, or not Poseidon, but um, Pluton was actually located in Wano. The actual ship, not blueprints, but the actual Pluton was located somewhere in Wano. And now what do we got from him? Uh... Okay, he's all um, bundled up in a, a, what do you call that, a barrel again with chains. And he's like, are we heading to Mary Joie again? Damn it, it's too muffled to hear. All right, now we're going back again. We see Luffy. He's just, Luffy is just losing his shit right now. Like He cannot believe that his brother that he was just reunited with could do something like kill, you know, Vivi's father. Like, there's just no way in Luffy's mind, even in Robin, you know, she's in agreement. There's just no way this could happen. And then what do we got? Okay, we see Zoro. He's snapping at Luffy right now. He's like, you moron. That's the den of the enemy. You want to take on Navy HQ, you know, since Luffy wants to go to Mary Joie to go find Vivi. And he's like, damn straight. That's what I'm talking about. And he starts calling Zoro chicken. He's like, what, you chicken? And then over there we see uh, Sanji. He's just freaking out right now. And he's just, you know, he's more concerned about Vivi, not what their plan is, not even really about Cobra. He's just freaking out that, you know, Vivi's missing right now. And he's like, please be safe. And then we see Chopper over there, you know, having a flashback of his, uh, you know, positive interaction with King Cobra. And he was thinking about, you know, you see Chopper, he's just bawling his eyes out. And he's just, like I said, he's just remembering how nice King Cobra was to them. You know, even though they were pirates, he treated them with respect and he was thankful to them for what they did for his kingdom. And then we see Usopp over there. He's like, yeah, he was the best king around. You know, Usopp, the hype man. And then we see Nami over there. She's like, oh, I'm torn between worrying about Vivi and how she's taking all this. And then what do we got? Okay, we see Jinbei. What are his thoughts? And then he's, seen, he's like, okay, it seems like Reverie is quite tumultuous this year. And then we see uh, Frankie. 
And he's like, this, wait, this is the same dude we met in Dress Rosa? And Brooke, what's he got to say? All right. Uh, I've never known anyone to be discontent with the way Alabasta is ruled, you know, at least under um, the Nefertari family, not, you know, when uh, Crocodile was trying to take over. And then next panel, okay, we still got, you know, Nami crying. We got Chopper crying. Luffy still screaming. And Zoro's just, ah. you know, just, just like, well, you idiots, knock it off already. All right. And what is, okay, Zoro's got something profound. He's like, Luffy, remember what you said about Ace that one time? Ace has his own adventures, and Luffy's like, shut up. He's like, you trusted him to make up his own way until that point where he actually needed help. All right, so I guess uh, he's saying, you know, BB didn't reach out to you for help. Sabo didn't reach out to you for help. Like, and he, okay, right, literally next panel, he's like, yo, why underestimate BB? She can hold her own, you know. She was a legitimate straw hat. Had she chosen to continue on, you know, she would have 100% been in a comma, and they still, you know, consider her, you know, part of the crew. So, you know, Luffy, he really should have some confidence in her. And he's like an old, you know, mom back there. He's like, you can't stop me from worrying, damn it. All right, what do we got now? He's like, you're an Oni, Oni Gashima, you're a green guy. Okay, so they're all just giving Zoro crap right now. They're like, you damn Ma's head, you green-headed fool. And they're just so pissed off at him. All right. And then, okay, we see Robin. She's going through the paper more, so maybe we're going to get some more information or, you know, uh, some other facts. Are they going to see about Kobe in this? And he says, uh, there were a lot of developments while we were in Wano, and, seem, uh, and things seem to be escalating fast. All right, so in the background, we see uh, Sanji and Zoro. They're clashing still, and presumably, you know, uh, San or Usopp and Chopper and all of them are still probably messing around. All right, and what do we got? Okay, so they're going to find out about the abolishment of the Shishibukai. And then, you know, of course, they already found out about um, the Cross Guild. And what do we got now? The Cross Guild was founded in Buggy the Bombastic Clown. And, and Luffy's still like, nope, there has to be some mix-up. I still don't buy this story. Like, Buggy's an idiot. There's no way in hell he's an actual emperor. Like, it's got to be a misprint or some shit happened. All right, what do we got now? Okay, so panning back out. He's like, Luffy, there are other familiar names in here. Would you like to hear the news about them, too? He's like, uh, no, nah, I'll leave it up to you. Just tell me if there's anything big to keep an eye on. Right, so Luffy, you know, having a little bit of trust in Robin, he's like, nah, I don't need to know every single thing. He's like, you got a good hold on it. Just let me know if there's anything that you think is big that I need to know about. And, you know, Robin all smiles. You know, she loves when the crew has that confidence in her and trusts her to do things. I wouldn't want to overload you with information. And she's like, and she knows Luffy can't handle reading the paper and going through, like, every single little thing. His brain would just explode. And he's still just like, he goes to lay down. He's just like, nope, Sabo's innocent. And they're like, definitely. All right. He says he had a real strict upbringing. He just wants to make sure no one else has their freedoms uh, taken away that he did. So growing up in a Goa kingdom, you know, he always felt that it was so restrictive. And he just wants people to be able to be free and live their lives. So there's just no way that anyone that, you know, from the Straw Hats that's met Sabo and interacted with him or, you know, is a brother with him you know, truly believe that Sabo would do something like kill Vivi's father. And especially not, you know, either unprovoked or, you know, for no reason whatsoever than just to kill him or he was in his way. Like, that's just not the type of man that Sabo is, even though that's kind of what he's being portrayed as in the news. And, you know, that's kind of what we were led to believe when we were talking about Dragon and we saw the revolutionaries, you know, Dragon be like, oh, I'll, I won't forgive Sabo if he really did this for any reason. And then, okay, we're going back. We're seeing the flashbacks to when Sabo and Luffy were little kids back in Goa. And he says, I want to see the world and write a book about it. All right, so Sabo and uh, Nami can link up. You know, Sabo can write the book. Nami can provide the maps. Be a good thing. And we, oh, we see Ace, little Ace in the background there. And he's like, three of us swore an oath, me, him, and Ace. And I said I'd become, wait. Oh, he said, I said, and then it stopped. And then you see the thousand sunny, and there's a big question mark and everything. He's like, huh? What did you just say? What? All right, did the sunny just talk to them? Wait, no. No, okay, this is what, so whatever Luffy said is what made them like, wait, what? All right, what does it say? Hey, are you serious? And we just, it's just going through all the straw hats, kind of reacting to whatever it is that Luffy said right there. Chopper, I think someone needs to check his head. And Robin's like, huh? 
And it says, oh, come on, there's no way anyone can do that. But I'll have a shot if I become the king of the pirate. All right, so wait, there's, there's something beyond, it seems, you know, becoming the king of the pirates and finding the one piece in Raphtel. You, I don't even know how you come up with this stuff. And they're just like, huh? I've never mentioned this to any. All right, we are literally getting some new information. All right. He always said, I'm the man who's going to become the pirate king. He wants to find the one piece. He wants to become the pirate king. So what else could there possibly be? And he's like, nope, but it wouldn't have made much of a difference since it's impossible. That means I only told Shanks, Ace, Sabo. And he's like, oh, and I guess that's it. And he's like, oh, how did they react? He's like, oh, they all laughed, and uh, Shanks and some tears rolling down his face. And then, all right, next panel. That's what I want at the end of my dream. And he's just, you know, relaxing right there. So what the hell is it that he wants? All right. And then we see Jim Bay. He's just cracking up at whatever Luffy said. And he's just like, oh, I joined this crew willingly, so I can't exactly say it's not my problem. He's like, damn, I sure picked a troublesome captain. And we just see Luffy over there. He's just, you know, laughing. And he, you see Chopper. He's just got, you know, his eyes are all stars. He's like, oh, my God, that's so cool. He's like, your dream's amazing. And Nami's just like, yep, that sounds like you. All right, what do we got? Since you got to be Pirate King to even make that possible, we better find that last uh, load poneglyph. Then it's off to Laugh Tale. And Robin's like, oh, you make it sound so easy, you know. So we had poneglyph at... Um, so we had Big Mom's Poneglyph, we had the one at Wano, and I guess the one that's still missing is the one that used to be located at Fishman Island that we saw in the flashback with Roger, but now we have no clue, you know, where it went. And our, what's Robin got to say? She's like, it's been a long time since that Poneglyph was last seen. We don't even have a clue on where to look. All right, so Robin's like, yo, we don't even know, like, we haven't heard hide nor hair of it, no one said anything, no one's seen it for, you know since the pirate king himself. All right, and then it says, oh my God, don't, we're going back to Navy HQ. Like if we're gonna get like, oh, we're gonna get some information and at the very end, we're gonna see the last road poneglyph is in possession of like, you know, a Kainu or the Gorose or some shit, you know, that would be crazy. But all right, Navy HQ, the new world. It says, we've intercepted a transmission from the flame emperor Samo, or Sabo to Kamabaka kingdom. All right, queen of, so this was them talking, you know, when we saw at that end of that chapter when Sabo was calling over to them and Koala answered, we didn't get to see, you know, the rest of that conversation. We just know that Sabo initiated, convers or, uh, initiated uh, conversation with them. And he, they're like, where's it coming from? We have to pin him. Okay, so they're trying to figure out, you know, where exactly Sabo is coming from, you know, either to capture him or, you know, to rescue Vivi if uh, they're not, you know, releasing the information. And then what do we got here? All right, it says, he's not using a white transponder snail to jam his call. He must be desperate. I doubt he'll speak for long. And then we're going, okay, we're going to the Gorose. What do they have to say on this matter? And they're like, all right, we've traced his position. Where is he? Lelouchia Kingdom. All right, what the hell is Lelouchia Kingdom? Because whatever it is, there's some exclamation points. And then we see, all right, the dude with the huge scar on the side of his face, he says, Lelouchia. And then the dude with the big white beard, mustache, he's like, really now? And then, oh, damn, we're getting Emu Sam. All right. All right, that's one of the eight nations that rebelled a few days ago. It would be an ideal place for Sabo to seek refuge. And we're just seeing him, like, working in there. And then Gandhi, you know, Gorose over there, he's like, I see, I see. And he's like, he's an unlucky man. No, this is his fate. All right, so what the hell are they talking about? They seem to know something. Or, you know, why did we see... Um, Imusama, but we didn't really see anything from him. He didn't say anything. All right, and then we're going, okay, we're going back to the Kamabaka Queendom right there. So, okay, maybe we're going to see the rest of this uh, conversation. All right, what do you guys think Sabo has to say? What do you, do you think he's going to flat out say, no, it wasn't me that killed him? Or is there going to be, you know, some justifiable reason that Dragon is just not going to see eye to eye with Sabo about, you know, as far as the reasoning behind Cobra's death? He's like, Sorry, I know I've caused you a lot of trouble. And everyone's just like, oh my God, Sabo, we're so glad to hear you're safe. And then, okay, we see Dragon. He's just got this stern ass look on his face. And it just says, Dragon Sign. We see Sabo, he's like, you know, yelling into the Denden Mushi. He's like, 
I wasn't the one who killed King Cobra. Hell yeah, we all knew it. But this just confirms it. Sabo over here being like, nope, I was not the one to kill Cobra. And, you know, we're seeing him right there. So, uh, you know, I doubt this is Katarina Devon, considering she was doing the stuff with Boa and, you know, out on Amazon Lily. So I don't think, uh, you know, Blackbeard would have dared interfere with stuff at the Reverie or the Goro Stay at this point in time. So, yeah, I saw some people that were thinking maybe because we didn't exactly see Sabo and, you know, there's some issues with the Denden Mushi's eyes or something like that, that maybe it wasn't Sabo. But, you know, this is Sabo right here. And then, okay, we see Morley back there, and he's like, of course not. I thought you, uh, I perished the thought. Never had doubted you. All right. And then everyone's like, oh, we knew you were innocent, Sabo. Listen, when I was in Mary Joie, all right, what are we about to get revealed? What, like, crazy detail did Sabo find out? He's like, I saw something unbelievable. And they're like, wait, unbelievable? He's like, the sky's getting dark. Are those clouds? Oh, damn, Lucia Kingdom. All right, something's happening because they're, they're talking about the clouds. Something's rolling in. And, you know, the Goro say they were like, that's his fate. So what the hell is about to happen to Sabo? And they're like, it's, oh, no. Don't tell me fucking Kaido is there. There's something huge up there. Or they, what do we got right here? And it says, uh. You heathens will regret this. When AVHQ gets word of this, you're... okay, so these are the nobles that were, I guess, overthrown in the kingdom of Lelouchia. And it says, King of Lelouchia, Seki. You know, he's got a little bandage on his cheek. And then it says, Princess um, Komane, Komane. I'm not sure how to say that. But it says, make sure they're... they leave a few for me, Papa. I'll never forgive those dirty plebs. All right, your majesty. No, I mean, Lord Seki. Please just confess to your crimes. We don't want to kill you. All right, so what? What's going on? You know, obviously, these people were probably pretty cruel. And this dude has some fangs, too. All right. And then, okay, we're seeing Imusama, and we're seeing the eyes right there. You know, the eyes. And it says, it happened in the throne room at Pangea Castle. All right. Is he about to reveal the existence of Imusama to Dragon? Was Dragon not aware that there was one person who stood above all else in the world government? And then it says, cut, cut the signal to the surveillance division's transponder snails. And they're like, what? He's like, I thought there was no king of the world. Yes, he's revealing the, the existence. But the empty throne wasn't empty. I saw dot, 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 exclamation point. And then, all right, what the hell is going on? As far as the surveillance division is concerned, uh, what is up there? A shadow? And we see people, and they're just looking up at it and it says, no one detected anything abnormal today. And then the people are like, they're like getting scared. They're like, hey, what the hell's going on? And then we just see Sabo kind of looking up like, what the hell's going on? And it says, no information was intercepted. And then it just goes back to Im Sama's eyes, like just one eye close up. And then it says, as for Lelouchia, and you just see this huge bright light in the sky. Everyone's looking up at it. You know, they're all being blinded by it. And then, okay, it says, that country... Nev, whoa, no, do we just, no, there's no way Sabo just got executed, but guys, this, this makes so much sense, this is what, this had to be what happened to God Valley, this is why God Valley no longer exists, why you can't find it on a map, why you can't just randomly run into the island, like, whatever the hell this power, I guess, is this Imusama's power, like, it's just this, I guess like a sun almost, and it's just falling down. Like, what the hell is this power? And it says, we have reports of sea quakes off the southeastern shore. And then they're just like, Sabo, Sabo. And then everyone's like, please be aware of tsunamis. And it's like the line just went dead. And then it says, a few days later, aboard Thousand Sunny. And it just, like, things are looking crazy. We got a big old sea king in the background. They're like, I'm scared, it's freezing, there's icebergs. They're like, watch out for icebergs. All right, so the sea looks like it's going crazy right now. And we say, okay, so Jim Bay is like screaming out commands, telling him what to do. And then he's asking Nami, like, oh yeah, are we close to land yet? And then she's, you know, oh, it feels like we've entered a different climate zone. I guess the next one's a winter island. All right, so they're assuming that the change in climate means they're coming to the next uh, island, whatever island it is. So it seems to be a winter island. And then we see Chopper in the next panel. He's got a big old straw hat on his head. Not like Luffy's straw hat, but like the one Ace made for um, 
um, what do you call, uh, horse, and it says, Tama gave me this hat to shield me from the snow. All right, so just like how I kind of shielded uh, horse from the snow, we got a little one for Chopper right there. That's cool. All right, and then, okay, we got Nami. He's sitting up on the front, you know, and he's like, hey, Nami, what, what the hell is that? And then Nami, you know, looks like she's getting wind whipped by the snow and by the wind. And she's like, huh, what are you? And then she's like, huh? She's freaking out. All right, and then what the hell is this thing? It's like, it's like a giant uh, warm eddy, and then an eddy current, but it's going upward. All right, so there's just this big-ass, crazy, like, current shooting up, and it says, uh, it must mean a mass of warm water is being forced up at uh, this point from somewhere. All right, so what the hell happened? Oh, wait, is this like Imusama's attack, like, went through the planet and pushed out water on the other side? And says, oh, it looks like an afro. Okay, we got broke. He's like, yo, it looks like an afro. It's like a rapid temperature increase. Change is dangerous. And Nami's like telling Jimbe, okay, Jimbe, we got to run. We'll be swallowed up. Jimbe's like, I got this. Leave it to me. Got the helmsman right there. No, he says, wait, somebody's trapped in the water. For real. Oh, please be Sabo. Come on, guys. Please be Sabo. And they're like, how could anyone be alive in there? Is it a mermaid? No, he's right. And then, okay, we see Nami. He's like... I can definitely hear a lady in distress. And then he's like, wait, through a body of water? All right, so who the hell is this? And then they're like, are you guys serious? Even if someone's in there, what are you guys supposed to do? And Zoro's like, I'll cut it. And he's getting ready to draw his sword. And you see Sonny, he's like, hey, you better not scratch on the lady. All right, and we see Zoro just shoo, easily slicing it with bird dance. And then, all right, we got Chopper stepping up. He's getting ready to do his doctor thing right there. He's like, hey, what's all the commotion? And then he's like, ah, I'm getting blown away because the, the wind gust caught his hat and he's in his little chibi form right now. All right. And then he's like getting blown away. And Usopp's like, wait, Chopper, why the hell did you come out? And we see, okay, we see Luffy throw his arm and grab Chopper. All right, you're getting blown away too. Whoosh. All right, so Luffy and Chopper just got taken by this huge wind gust or whatever the hell it is. And then it says, a kid pop. That's Jewelry Bonnie. Hell yeah. <laughs> it says, one of the worst generation, the glutton Jewelry Bonnie. 320 million. A chance meeting, but she's small. All right, so you guys remember, she was at Mary Joie. She saw Kuma. She had some connection to Kuma. So what the hell does this mean? Like, what's going on? Why is Jewelry Bonnie showing up? Like, was that Eddie that they saw? Was that a result of the attack? from Imusama, like wherever Lelouchia Kingdom was. What do you guys think? Was that Imusama's power that we saw? Are you guys, you know, buying what I'm thinking as far as that's exactly how uh, God Valley was destroyed and, you know, what, uh, wiped out the map, or wiped off the map, excuse me. You know, that kind of begs the question, what, uh, you know, what exactly, what exactly happened on God Valley? Yeah, we know that Garp and, um, Roger took out Roxby Zebek, but there had to obviously be something more to that, or were they literally trying to wipe out Rox's existence? Kind of like how they just did to Sabo, you know, as he's trying to reveal, but he actually, I think it went through it that he revealed that the empty throne isn't, you know, empty, that there is someone, there is a king who rules above everybody else, including the Gorosei, and again, how does Jewelry Bonnie fit into this? Was she with Sabo? Did she team up with them? Did she see them? Because, you know, obviously she didn't make it to Kuma because Kuma is back on Kamabaka Kingdom with Dragon and all them. So how did they get separated? You know, what exactly went down? We still don't have all the fine details, but we do have my man Sabo confirming that he did not kill Cobra. He is, in my mind, 100% vindicated, you know, clear of all charges. He's still the good brother. Uh, whether or not he's actually alive now, that's a whole different story. But uh, that gives me a lot to ponder, a lot to think about. Let me know what you guys thought about this chapter. If you guys saw anything that I missed, please let me know down in the comments. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for stopping by. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.